good morning, knights and princesses of Yonkers. It is I, Sir Stein of Artland. Today, I am going to be teaching you how to make some jack-o'-lanterns and spooky artwork for Halloween. Please do not scare your siblings or your parents with your work. Do scare yourself if you're able to. Please enjoy this video. And as always, send me your work when you are ready. Please join me as we work. Okay, guys, I'm adjusting the camera like always. We're going to do some Halloween drawings, okay? I've already uploaded haunted houses to the channel. Now we're going to do some jack-o'-lanterns. All right. So, I like to do this in layers. Obviously, you can make this as easy or as hard as you want. The more you add, well, the fancier it gets and the more harder it gets. More harder. Wonderful English, I know, guys. That's why I'm the art teacher, not the English teacher. Anyway, I like to start the lightest area, especially from my background. I'm going to make a giant kind of glowing moon or sun in the background. So I'm just using a circle, as you can see. I'm using my oil pastels. I like to use the Crayola oil pastels in school, as you guys know. They work beautifully. They are not overly expensive. They are great quality. But you can use crayons if you prefer. But I'm going to use these mainly because I plan to do some overlapping and blending. And the easiest way to do that is using the pastels. Crayons and markers just don't blend the same way. I might overlap a little bat in here as long as I'm working in this area. The bat's head, which is a circle and two triangles. I can make some pointy wings. And I can fill it in and you have a bat silhouette flying through your moon. This is why I like the pastels. Look how nice these overlap to get silhouettes. Remember, if you are using your pastels at home, they are oil-based, they are harder to wash out of clothes, so try to be careful. I'm gonna add my black pumpkin silhouette down here. And yes, I'm overlapping it off the page. I'm making a stump on top. If I want, I can curve it a bit more. I'll fit it, fill it in more in a minute. I just want to add some eyes first. I'll fill those in for the mouth. Right, have a bit of fun with this. This pumpkin really needs some good dental work, guys, okay? Send him some money, he is hurting. I'll color in the rest of the silhouette so it's nice and spooky looking. Yes, I'm missing some of my white spots, but if I take my time too much, this video will take too long and you guys will get bored and lose your attention. So, I'm gonna keep it a bit simpler. You guys know to take your time when you color. Remember, you can turn your paper as needed Nothing says you cannot rotate your paper as needed. So many people reach over the top for no reason. Turn your paper if you need to. All good. See? So 
So I have my basic pumpkin silhouette. I'm gonna add some orange and some yellow. I'm actually gonna start the orange more around the edges of the eyes and the mouth. And then a little bit light in the middle so I can blend it in a minute. So darker around the edges, lighter in the middle for blending. If you get a little bit of that black mixed in, not a bad thing, it looks good. Again, don't worry about perfection. You're only perfect when you're dead. And I know it's Halloween, but none of you guys are dead yet. Keep it that way, please. Now take another color like yellow and blend. Give it that nice spooky look. Again, this is why I love oil pastels. Look how beautifully that blends. Just remember, don't, you can only blend if you leave those white spots. Otherwise, nothing really is going to happen. Maybe you want to add a spooky tree. All the way up to here. See? Let it overlap off the edge. Oh, sorry guys, I think my light turned off. Let's try that again. Oh, and I guess that light does not work indefinitely. All right, we'll fix that later. You should still be able to see you okay. I was using a little spotlight, but as you can see, it kind of turned off a bit. No worries. Technology is a fickle lady or man, who knows. So again, create your nice silhouettes. When you color your sky, you can use any colors. I like to use more of like a purplish red to get a nice spooky look, but to each their own. So I'm gonna fill in the tree, get a nice spookiness to it. Maybe down here, I'll add like a fence hiding in the background. So a little hint of a fence. I'm using rectangles, not just lines. Look how I'm making my lines thicker. It gives it a rectangular look, which makes it better for popping things out. I'm not gonna put green grass back here because again, it's supposed to be dark and spooky. So you have to decide what you wanna put back here. You can make it glowing. You can make it red, purple, pink, more orange, maybe some more fire in the background. Actually, I like that idea. I'm gonna add some more flames kind of back here. That way I can make it glow because I like that orangey yellow glow that I did earlier. So I'm gonna put that back here behind the fence to give it more of a spooky background. Then I'll take my yellow again and do some more blending. When you're done, you should see no white space on your paper for this project. White won't look very good in this kind of project. You wanna really fill it in. So take your time, as you can see, be creative, blend, and really make it glow. I'm gonna make my sky with some purple and a little bit of red. And I'm gonna turn my paper to make it a little bit easier. So I'm not gonna color it all in one color. I'm kind of adding a little bit here, a little bit there. Because I want to blend and mix in. I'm tracing the edge of the sun so I don't get color in there if I don't want to, and I do not want to. I'm 
and then I'll start to add more colors in as I choose. So now I'm gonna start to add some red into my spooky sky. I can overlap the purple, that's fine. It's okay if I have white spots because I'm not quite done. I am gonna blend a little bit more after the red. So a few white spots here and there is a good thing because I plan to blend one more time. If I get a bit of black mixed in, just great, actually, because I get to see more. I can take a yellow again, and if I want to, by blending a bit of yellow on top, you can see I get some of that kind of orangey red look in the sky. I would not blend much of the yellow into the purple because it's gonna turn kind of a brownish color. So I'm really only blending mainly where I put the red down in the sky. Wherever it hits the purple, you see it's kind of turning kind of a brownish color. I don't really like that as much, so I'm not gonna do too much of that. And as you guys can see, where I leave the white spots, I get more of a blend, or there's not much white spots, you don't really see the yellow do a whole lot. Like I told you guys, you have to leave white to really blend these. So if there's no white spots, the blends don't really have much of an impact. Add a bit more here to get some of those white spots. And you have a nice spooky Halloween project. I hope you guys enjoyed. All right. Take it easy. Have a great Halloween. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Get some delicious candy. If you don't like your Reese's, send them all my way. I love my Reese's. Take it easy, guys. See you soon.